When you look back at ASP.NET 1.0 and 1.1, working with membership required you to write a lot of code. Basically, you're on your own. You had a choice. You could use either of Windows authentication for intranet sites, or you can use forms-based authentication for public sites. And Windows-based authentication is somewhat easier because you don't have to track the user and store their information in a database somewhere. Windows does that for you. If you used forms-based authentication, that required writing some sort of user management system, usually storing that in some database. That ended up with you having to write a data layer for storing the data, and some sort of business layer for managing those users and roles. And of course, you needed a presentation layer for managing logging in and changing passwords and keeping track of passwords and whatever. It was a big pain. In ASP.NET 2.0, however, this is a lot easier. You're going to be amazed at how much less you have to do to make this work. Membership is a built-in system, as is role management. They're both built in, all the code's written, so for membership management and for role management, you don't have to do anything special to make this work. You can replace and enhance authentication and authorization features in the earlier versions of ASP.NET. These features add on to what you've already got. So they mix and match with what you've already written, so you don't have to stop right away and revise. You can just add on to your existing code. It's now easy to manage users and roles. The great part about this is that it's independent of the data store. You can create new membership and role providers as well, if you like, and store the data any way you like. So let's start with membership management. This provides special features, including a pluggable provider model, meaning you can choose, even at runtime, which provider you'd like to use for storing your data. It provides for creation of new users, making it easy for you to add users to your system. It allows for storage of user data to any data source. By default, ASP.NET includes a provider for SQL Server. It actually supports SQL Express, that is the free version of SQL Server 2005 as well, and that's the default store for where you put this stuff, although you can convince it to use SQL Server, as you'll see later on. The administration of passwords is easy, including storing, verification, resetting, and reminding users. User authentication, well, that has to be there. That's built in as well. In addition, you'll find controls that make it simple to use these features. And these are extensible, templated controls. So they're easy for you to modify if you don't like the way they look or they work. In addition, underneath those controls, there's a full featured API making it possible for you to get in and modify the membership without having to use those controls if you don't like. And we'll look at examples of doing things both ways. Role management is easy, too. You need some way to administer those roles. And of course, this means adding and deleting roles. You need some way to retrieve a list of users in each role. And of course, role management in ASP.NET supplies this feature. In addition, you can retrieve a list of roles for each user. So you can get it both directions. They also allow you to cache role information in an encrypted cookie so that you don't have to perform a costly lookup for each user authentication. This is transparent once it's set up. It's just a setting in web.config and doesn't require you to do anything special to make it happen. Let's take a graphical look at how the various pieces of the security services stack fit together. In the middle, you'll find a full featured programming API, including membership and role manager support. Underneath there is some sort of data storage. You have to have a place to put this information. By default, you'll find providers for SQL Server and SQL Express, and you can also have your own custom providers as well. And this API communicates with that data storage in order to store the membership and role manager information. You can work with that API directly if you want, but on top of that is a layer of server controls. They talk to the API and make it simple for you to create interfaces that gather information from users about membership and roles without having to write any code at all. We'll look at each of these controls in detail later on. Of course, the data has to go somewhere. You want to store this information persistently. You can store it in SQL Express or SQL Server 2000 or 2005 by default. ASP.NET includes a provider for these data stores. 
it's not terribly difficult to create your own provider for some other data store and we'll cover this we'll create a sample XML provider for storing membership and role information later in this session it's non-trivial but at least you'll get an idea of how to get started creating your own provider if you choose to use SQL Express the data is stored in the app underscore data folder in a database named ASP.NetDB.MDF within your solution. Now, SQL Express and SQL Server 2005 make it really easy to store data in a data file with an MDF extension and load that data without having to actually attach it to SQL Server. This makes it really easy to deploy your applications because you don't have to do anything besides make the data file available and it will be able to be used within your application. The data access is based on that provider model. That is, the provider model guarantees the API is the same from the developer's perspective, but different under the covers. That's the beauty of this provider model. No matter what data source you use, this API extracts the data access away from the membership and roles and allows you to program it no matter what data store you're using exactly the same within your code. Although ASP.NET ships with a provider to store data in SQL Server, the provider model is extensible, and you can create your own providers and integrate them with your applications with relative ease. Again, it takes some code, but it's not that hard to do, and you'll see later how to get started. So let's start by thinking about using SQL Server. If you want to use SQL Server to store your membership and role data, and actually there are other areas of ASP.NET that also use the same mechanism, you'll need to run some SQL scripts to prepare the server. Those will be stored in a folder underneath the Microsoft.NET framework version 2.0. whatever your version is on your computer. Now you can either run an executable ASP.NET underscore reg SQL.exe or you can install the SQL scripts directly. I'll show both of those techniques. There are a few of these that apply to membership and roles. If you're only worried about membership and role management, you can just run those SQL scripts directly. These scripts create the necessary database and tables on the server. I've navigated to the .NET Framework folder under the Windows folder on my machine, and now I'll go to the folder corresponding to the correct version of the .NET Framework. And if you look at the files in this folder, let me sort by type, I'll find under SQL scripts, if I scroll down far enough, here are all the SQL scripts I need to run to set things up. For example, there is here install membership, there it is, and install common. Of course, install common has to be run first to create the database. I could do those, loading them up into my version of SQL Server, but instead I'll sort by name, go back up to the top, and we'll run ASP.NET Reg SQL. And this little application just does the work for me. I click Next, I will configure SQL Server, and I'll use my local machine using Windows Authentication, and let's just let it rip. This will, at this point, set up the database and create the necessary tables. I think we're about done. Of course, I had already run that, so it might take longer on your computer. In any case, now SQL Server is set up with the correct set of tables in it. If I go over to Start and choose my SQL Server Enterprise Manager, I'm using SQL Server 2000. You might be using a later version on your computer. If we come look at the tables here, we should find ASP.NET DB, there's our database, and under tables, we'll find all the tables necessary to keep track of user information. You see membership is here, there's roles as well, and you'll find other tables corresponding to other features in ASP.NET. Using membership and role features requires adding configuration settings to your web.config file. It also requires setting up specific users and roles in the database. You could do this work by hand. You could modify web.config, you could go to your database and add users, but that's a lot of effort. Instead, we'll use a web-based configuration tool provided by the ASP.NET team. This makes it easy using this web-based configuration tool to just add the users, add the roles, add the membership information without having to modify web.config or databases yourself. In Visual Studio.NET, just select the appropriate menu item and it brings up the tool. This configuration tool allows you to select the provider and it sets up appropriate values in web.config as well, so you don't have to go working in web.config unless you want to. Let's look at this tool and see how it works.
In Visual Studio, I've opened the sample project 